well, blackouts, company bankruptcies, a business exodus from Britain. These are just some of the dire warnings from the energy companies after Ed Miliband promised yesterday he'd force them to freeze prices. But there's no doubt if the polls are to be believed. It's a politically popular policy. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is at Labour's conference in Brighton. Gary. As you said, apocalyptic warnings coming from the energy companies that the lights will go out all over the country. And Ed Miliband here responding with that now familiar sort of signature Zen-like calm, firing off a letter to the energy companies telling them he's not budging and telling his party here that it's just scare tactics and they shouldn't be worried about it. The party went away happy that they had a policy that they could sell on the doorstep, although you kept finding older, more seasoned hands saying biting their lip, this had better be a watertight policy because they know the stakes are high. The conference ended with the traditional singing of the red flag. You can see it here. And uh, Ed Miliband, as you can see, uh, knows the words pretty well. He grew up with Marxist parents and learnt them in the crib, if not the womb. The big question that hangs around now as Labour has deserted its conference is what the Tories in particular are going to do to respond. They've been crunching through numbers for a while now, trying to work out what they can do about energy prices. I'm told even by one source that they considered whether to scrap VAT on uh, domestic fuel. Whatever it is they come up with, being the government, they have more levers, more cards, and Labour will now just have to wait and see what they come up with. Before the conference ended, I caught up with Ed Miliband and I asked him, could he really be 100% sure that he could, as he planned in 2015, freeze uh, domestic fuel bills, given that he, he could be coming to office at a time when, say, uh, the world gas price was soaring? We will be able to do it, and that's what we're going to do. And why? Because we've got a cost of living crisis in this country, and we need to take action and we've got a market that isn't working in energy. If, say, the gas price rocketed in the market, you'd be stymieing all the investment that, that you said yourself when you used to run the Department of Energy is desperately needed. Here's the interesting thing about the investment issue. We've seen profits rise over the last three years, and we've seen investment approximately halved since I was Energy Secretary. And we see the companies paying out most of their profits in dividend payments. Listening to what you were saying yesterday, it sounded as though if there is a small number of uh, companies that dominate a very sizable chunk of a market and appear to be charging excessively, that's when you, Ed Miliband, might go in and act on prices and things like that as a Prime Minister. Is that right? I, I think it's always a last resort. But is and this is a market I sort of know quite well because I was the Energy Secretary. I think many other things have been tried well, to sort out this market. I think this is the right thing to do. So mobile phone companies, very small number of companies dominating the market, broadband companies, very small number dominating the market, some people would say uh, overcharging areas like the construction industry where a very small number of companies dominate the industry, all sorts of questions there. Surely an Ed, Ed Miliband as Prime Minister is going to wade in there and act. The reason why energy is so exceptional is because of the nature of energy as a good that people have no choice about. And secondly, that these were, this was na a nationalised industry which was then privatised, well, not, in a particularly but, not in a particularly successful way, uh, in my view. Are You'll they no-go areas, some it, well, of these well, other let, ones, let me, or would you consider acting in a similar well, let me way answer in these your other question directly. Markets? Governments of both parties often look at the systems of regulation. Of course they do. Of course you should always look at systems of regulation in areas that have regula regulated systems to make sure they're right. But I suppose I'm giving you a pretty clear signal, Gary. I think that energy it is particular and exceptional. I spoke to Neil Kinnock after your speech yesterday. Um, he, I told him, we now know what pre-distribution means, don't we? And he said, oh, I always knew. Prices and incomes policy. That's basically what it is, isn't it? Because you're out there talking about, uh, obviously, price intervention here. And then on incomes, you want to put pressure on companies to make sure they pay the living wage. And you're talking about sectoral minimum wage, a bit like the old wage boards that went away. It is prices and incomes policy, albeit rethought for the modern age, perhaps. I wouldn't describe it that way. Look, the way I'd describe it is this. I, I talk about one nation. What does one nation mean? It means markets that work in the public interest. And in the end, if competition doesn't work, sometimes you do have to step in. It means, re it means responsibility going all the way to the top of our society, and that includes some of the big vested interests.
in your speech, you glanced over austerity measures. The country is facing another great round, enormous round of austerity measures, whoever comes to power after the next general election. We know that the Tories are thinking of doing 100% on cuts. Lib Dems at their last conference were talking about 80 on cuts percent, 20 on tax. What's your percentage? Is it 60-40, uh, 50-50? Well, we've set out a very clear plan, which no, is that for... We don't know what it is. You're we've set out a very clear plan, which is for 2015-16, we won't borrow more for day-to-day -day spending. In other words, any changes from the Conservatives' totals, from this government's totals for day-to-day for, for -day spending... I'm talking about the whole of the will, next ...will be funded by re either extra revenue or by reductions elsewhere. Now, I think for an opposition, 18 months, 20 months from a general election. That is an incredibly clear position. Let me just say the election question is this. Whose side is the government going to be on? Are they going to make life easier for ordinary families or just a privileged few? And will you tackle the cost of living crisis? And that's what we will do in government. It's a party unabashedly under you putting its tent in a different place to where Gordon Brown, Tony Blair or your brother David Miliband would have wanted to put it. Did those three people misjudge where the centre ground of British politics is? It's actually a bit to the left of where they thought it was. You know, I think the labels aren't important. I think it's, it's meeting the concerns of the British people. And the British people know that the country's not working for them. And they want a government and they want a prime minister who will make it work for them. And that's what I'll do, tackling their number one issue. I'm the only politician really talking about this issue, the cost of living crisis, and that's what I'm going to do.